Well, joining me now is Peter Galbraith, a former U.S. diplomat and advisor to the Kurdish regional government of Iraq. In San Diego, we have Nick Vamos, the former head of extradition at the U.K.'s Crown Prosecution Service. And with me here in studio, we have political an analyst Onur Erim and Hakka Ojal, the political editor for the pro-government Turkish newspaper Milliyet. Gentlemen, I thank you all for joining us. Onur Erim, let me begin with you. The fact that Salih Muslim was in the Czech Republic, detained, Turkey wanted him extradited, but the Czechs let him go. You can't be happy about that. I don't think anybody in, in their right mind could be happy about this. Uh, the organization is a... Uh, you know, it's, it's a stamped organization for being a terrorist organization worldwide, including the U.S. Uh, Saleh Muslim is known uh, f for a fact that he's the leader, and he's been captured after uh, a Turkey's uh, request with the Interpol, with the Red Bulletin. He's being captured, let, yet he's being let go. Hmm. Who can be happy about this in what way? I have no idea. Peter Galbraith, were the Czechs right to let him go? I, I wasn't uh, in the courtroom, but I, I think what's uh, clear is that the Czechs did not think there was sufficient evidence to justify uh, his uh, uh, detention. Uh, and they also were prepared to accept his word that he would uh, appear in, in court. Uh, Turkey's um, <clears throat> sort of conduct, particularly post-coup, raises a lot of questions about the quality of justice in the country. Uh, and I think that probably taints any effort to go after somebody whose uh, arrest looks primarily to be political. Uh, while Turkey considers the PYD, the party that Salih Muslim founded and uh, for a long time headed, to be a terrorist uh, organization or really to be the same as the PKK, the rest of the world does not. Uh, and in fact, the PYD really has been a ally of the United States in fighting the Islamic State terrorists in Turkey, in, um, in Syria. Okay. So I, I think these, for these reasons, um, the court just didn't find the case that Turkey had presented to be very persuasive. Okay. And if you, you look at things, I mean, with a, a, a novelist, for example, arrested for giving some, or sentenced to life in prison, and this is in the New York mm -hmm. Times today, for giving subliminal signals about the coup the day before, it really does raise questions about the quality of justice in Turkey. Okay, so two points made there. Hake Ojal. Why don't you tackle them? Number one, the quality of justice in Turkey. And number two, that connection that Turkey makes between the PKK and the YPG, Peter Galbraith is saying not everybody makes that connection. So it's fine if you make the connection, but not necessarily for the Czechs or other European countries. Everybody does. I mean, hey, look, only the last week at the, the United States Congress, there was this document disclosed by the U.S. national security apparatus that PYD and YPG were directly related with PKK. U.S. recognized PKK as a terrorist organization. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, Turkey didn't ask them to, uh, to try him or anything, just to extradite. And uh, they are part of the same agreement with Turkey. They have to respect Turkey, Turkish request. Did it take only 10 minutes for Czech court to evaluate Turkish request? No, it is this blanket argument that the, the, the quality of justice in Turkey after the coup attempt is not good. It is self-infatuation. I mean, everybody, including Mr. Galbraith, are falling in love with this, with this statement. It is not true. There is justice in Turkey, and its quality is as good as the United States justice. Where this idea came from, I don't understand. I mean, there was a coup. And he, there was... Okay, he, he pointed to a novelist who's spending life in prison. Novelist, A, he is not a novelist. He is novelist after the fact. Actually, he is a newspaper columnist. He is a newspaper general editor. He made general comments uh, on television, mm -hmm. implying that, showing that he knew that this coup was coming. He, he threatened the president and the whole elected government uh, with certain terms. I mean, the, the, okay. when you say this, he's a novelist or something, you throw him in because okay, of so, his novels? Okay, and, and, and I guess we could debate the merits, the pros and cons of that case um, another time. Inshallah. But I want to kind of move on to, to uh, Nick Vamos here and talk about Saleh Muslim again. So, Nick, there's an interesting thing here. On the one hand, 
we're, we're looking at whether there was a threshold of evidence that might show that Salih Muslim was actually involved in terrorism against Turkey. On the other hand, if he is a member of a listed terror organization, do you actually need any evidence that he was involved in any, any terror attacks on Turkey because the PKK is a listed terror organization? Which one sort of takes precedence when it comes to what Turkey is asking of the Czechs? Well, if he is found to be a member of a designated terrorist organization that the Czech Republic recognizes, and they also have an offense of being a member of a recognized terrorist organization, then most of the um, evidence is going to be uh, just proving those facts, and the underlying terrorist act that he's accused of will be less relevant. Um, but can I just point out, as Peter Galbraith did, all the Czech court have done is granted him bail. Um, and that's a judicial decision based on the facts that presented to them. Um, it hasn't gone any further than that in the Czech Republic yet. Right. Okay. So, Onur Erim, the fact that he's just been granted bail, what do you want to happen next? Well, I mean, we can't, first of all, we can just let go this, this situation of him being just granted bail. He's, he's possibly going to be free to move within the U European Union. We're, he we're hearing he might go to Finland. A and right. he's also a resident, from what we mm -hmm. understand, of, of Finland. Uh, it is not an excuse uh, for, for doing anything. Um, talking about, going back to the, uh, the previous uh, points, uh, we have to realize, we have to understand that uh, this organization is a known, not just by this administration, but the administration before, the U.S. administration before, as a terrorist organization. That's number one. And for any country in the world, especially the U.S., to accuse Turkish justice system anything less than decent or good, uh, they have to uh, explain what they have done in Guantanamo Bay, to say the least. Uh, but let's, let's get back to our point. Uh, we do not ask, ask as Turks for anything besides justice. Now, we have an organization that's known, that's validated by most countries, including the U.S., as a terrorist organization. We have a guy who led this, co-chaired this terrorist organization. This guy has been captured. He has to be extradited to Turkey. Right. Uh, in this, that's the way it should be. And I hope and I wish that the Czech Republic... Uh, as the rumors that are going around in the newspapers over there, are not looking to, to, to this as a trade-off with the two other Czech terrorists that are uh, in prison in Turkey right now. Okay, now, and we don't have any evidence of that. I mean, these are, th this is kind of noise at the uh, moment, Exactly. Right? Peter Galbraith, let me ask you, in, in the sort of uh, cold, harsh light of day, in terms of the geopolitics, if the YPG was not involved in the fight against Daesh or ISIS, would you care about this guy's fate or anybody else connected to the group? Well, I would, I would care about somebody getting a fair trial. Uh, but I, I think that it's important to look at who Salih Muslim is. Uh, he was the founder of a Syrian party that uh, certainly the only Turkey considers this uh, Syrian party to be the PKK. Uh, I mean, however much uh, your other guests wish to say it's the PKK, the fact is that there are 2,000 American special forces fighting alongside uh, the troops of that organ that, that are related to that organization. Uh, and uh, it, it is the organization that has been the most effective in fighting terrorism. No, but certainly, and Sally Muslim but, has been a political Mr. leader. Mr. Galbraith, if you're allowed to just for a second. That, I might add that he lost his son to terrorists. Certainly. And, and fair uh, enough, he, did, he lost they, his, his son in the fight against ISIS. Let me just sort of jump in here for a second, and you can expand on it for a second. Uh, it's, isn't it a bit disingenuous to say it's only Turkey saying this when even the YPG themselves claimed somebody who was involved in an Ankara bombing on behalf of the PKK. So somebody blew up civilians in Ankara, a woman. She was a part of the urban wing of the PKK. The YPG on their website claimed her afterwards and said she trained with us in Syria. So they themselves are saying, hey, there's a connection between us, right? So I can, I can well understand that you're saying tactically on the battlefield in northern Syria right now, enemy of my enemy is my friend. But isn't it a bit of denialism to say that, oh, well, only Turkey is only saying there's a link between them and there's no other evidence that checks out? Well, I, first, I, I, I don't uh, have no, no the, these, these, these things, points you're making um, about what was, on, what was on the website. 
I, I think that we, we, the U.S. does believe, uh, and obviously I don't speak for the U.S. government, I'm a private citizen now, but I think the U.S. government does believe that, that these are, are separate organizations, uh, that they do not think that U.S. weapons are going to the, the PKK to be used against the fight in the fight in, in Turkey. Um, and uh, and as, they, as I said, they see uh, uh, the organization that Saudi Muslim has headed for many years as being a, an ally. Uh, and, and, and as I noted, he, he lost his own son in the fight against the Islamic State. And, you know, it, one could look at Turkey's record on, on some of the fight against terrorism. They, the, the, I, many of the Islamic State fighters came through Turkey because the country, frankly, didn't have uh, sufficient controls. And there have been cases of Turkish intelligence officers who have been arrested in Turkey for, or, uh, for having engaged in terrorist acts, which they tried to blame on the PKK. I don't think that makes, um, uh, you know, the, the Turkish intelligence services an, uh, a terrorist organization at all. I mean, uh, and so I don't think that if, if, if this woman had some connection to the YPG or the YPJ, I don't think that makes the whole uh, uh, YP, uh, PYD, YPG, YPJ into a, a terrorist organization. Which one Obviously, of, okay. the act that took place okay. in Turkey was terrorism. Okay. Onur Erim or Haka Ojo, which one of you wants to jump in here? <laughs> Tell me. It is, uh, I mean, either, uh, not us, but any uh, high school kid in Turkey could respond to these, these uh, allegations. I mean, uh, YPG itself, PKK itself, claims that they are the same mem members of the same organization, which is called KCK. It is the umbrella organization. Right. And you go to Afrin, for instance, right now, Turkish uh, army is... Uh, trying to uh, to clean the terrorists from uh, every street corner has these Abdullah Öcalan po posters uh, displayed in town. Abdullah Öcalan is the founder right. uh, of PKK, who is in jail right now. I mean, it is so obvious. You should be blind to claim what uh, Mr. Galbraith does. Right okay, can now. I can I take what you said there? Now that you mentioned Öcalan, and I want to whatever you wanted to say, Onur, can you add it to sure. this question? How much of a big deal is Salih Muslim, really? I mean, he's the former sort of leader of, of this organization. Is he worth all the effort that Turkey's putting into it, trying to get him back here? And will it have any impact operationally, symbolically, or otherwise on Operation Olive Branch right now in Syria? Is he worth all the trouble? Um, if you follow, if you've been following uh, President Erdogan since the beginning on terrorism, he's got zero tolerance. So he may be the former uh, co-chairman, he may not be very involved right now, but Tayyip Erdogan, when it comes to Turkey, when it comes to neighboring countries, when it comes to the world on terrorism, he's got zero tolerance. So yes, he is as important right now as the current uh, you know, uh, leaders of YPG uh, or PKK mm -hmm. because he has zero tolerance. Tayyip Erdogan has been saying the same thing since day one. There is no good terrorist, there is no bad terrorist. Terrorism is a world crime. Uh, the gentlemen, I guess, are, are overlooking the fact that uh, YPG uh, is not considered only by Turkey as a terrorist organization. It's been said over and over by the U.S. officials at the topest level that they, they are also. The fact that the U.S. has made one of the biggest mistakes of its history in the region, arming and cooperating with a terrorist organization like YPG, does not, does not validate... Uh, the, the, the organization as a non-terrorist organization. And the uh, U.S. Me... will suffer, not through us, but throughout the region, will suffer the consequences of this. Peter Galbraith, you want to jump in? Yes, uh, I mean, I think it's uh, fair to, to point out that Salih Muslim was invited to Turkey and visited Turkey and had meetings with Turkish uh, uh, and intelligence officials and perhaps other Turks not very long ago. No, totally. So and, if, if Turkey we, thought, if Tayyip just, Erdogan, th you know, thought he was a terrorist, then why did Tayyip they had Erdogan a falling out, right? No, they, they, they had a falling out. There was a peace process. Just, just like US and Taliban. No, but there, but there was a peace pro process, uh, indeed, and, and that's, that's being spoken about here as well. Nick Vamos, what are the chances of extradition? Turkey wants extradition. What are their chances legally? And are they dealing with the Czech courts or are they dealing with the EU courts when it comes to this? Well, they're, they're dealing directly with the Czech courts, but the challenge for Turkey is to persuade the rest of the world that they are not making politically motivated extradition requests. And the problem is 
if you issue political threats through your senior officials before somebody's arrested, at the point that they're arrested, and then criticize the court after all they've done is grant him bail, and these are political criticisms done by senior figures within the Turkish authorities, if you take all of those steps, then you are proving the rest of the world's point that this is a politically motivated process. Okay. This is meant to be a judicial decision uh, that's an interesting based point. on facts and based on evidence. And all of these political interventions are undermining Turkey's efforts. Okay, so let me take that point, because we are running out of time. I want to take that point and pose it to Hakkı Öcal. So, Bekir Bozda, the uh, government spokesperson, Turkish Deputy Prime Minister, saying that what the Czechs have done is tantamount to supporting terrorism. Yeah, exactly. Is and I think that's an outrageous comment. Okay, so Nick Ramos it. thinks it's outrageous and it's proving the when, point to the, the Czechs that, listen, you can't trust Turkey. two U.S. presidents said the very same thing about Osama bin Laden, was it political statement or was it, was it a sentimental national statement? Mm -hmm. What document uh, justifies the, 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 the attack on uh, Osama bin Laden's uh, compound in, in, in Afghanistan, in the mountains. There's a I mean, court process underway in the Czech Republic. You should respect that court process. Everybody okay. does respect that no. process. No. Who said something against it? I mean, they are talking about nation's sentiments about this terrorist did. Uh, did you see the carnage in Ankara when this bomb exploded? Okay. Hundreds of people died. So, Honor, should these comments by senior Turkish government officials be dialed back a little bit, given that the process is going on in the Czech Republic? Maybe, but if even they're dialed up, I wouldn't, I can't blame them. Turkish government, the Turkish people are frustrated. There has been 252 civilians killed in the July 15 coup attempt. There has been, I don't know, I, maybe I guess close to a thousand uh, people, soldiers or, or former soldiers or police officers mm -hmm. that fled the country that are responsible of this some in Greece, some in uh, Germany, some in England, some in other parts of Europe. Not one, not one has, forget about being extradited, not one has been questioned. The ones that were captured in Greece were, were uh, you know, ba bailed out or, or, or released on, 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 on a close watch, but none of them have been questioned, none of them has been, have been extradited. So do understand the Turkish politi politicians' frustration when it comes to this, because the Turkey, by all means, with every right, does not trust the unjust uh, system of, of Europe, European courts, because they are one-sided when it comes to issues like these. They are blind over every, um, you know, value that Turkey has for the region has. Uh -huh. If it's good to them, it's justice. If it's not, it's not. It, it okay. doesn't work that way. Major debates about justice and what it means. Not a lot of trust going around back and forth between the Turkey, the EU, and across the Atlantic. For the moment, I've got to move on. And I apologize, gentlemen, if not everybody had as much of an opportunity as they wanted. The fault is all my own. Peter Galbraith, Nick Vamos, Hake Ojal, and Onur Erim, I thank you all for joining us here on the Newsmakers.